It has been a really hard three years. There's a lot of work to do to get kids back to where we want them to be. And we need to be learning from folks on the ground that know and have insight into the sources and tools that get kids to where we want them to be. I'm Chase Nortengren. I am the Principal Research Lead for Effective Instructional Strategies at NWEA. I work primarily with our professional learning team on all of the things that we do to help increase our impact. Um, everything from our program evaluation work to this work, which is really centered around identifying some of the best instruction throughout the country and finding ways to incorporate it in our content and what we provide our partners. At NWEA, we have access to data on 25,000 schools across the United States, and not only information about their achievement, what students are able to accomplish at grade level, but their growth how much students learn throughout a year regardless of where they started. We can use that data to identify the schools that are routinely, for all kinds of students, producing high levels of student growth. I'm Dr. Karen Lewis. I'm a researcher here at NWEA, and I co-lead our National COVID Research Agenda. I think it's always important to track how kids are growing over the course of the year. It's been increasingly important since the onset of the pandemic when we know not only have kids taken a step back in terms of their achievement levels, but we've also seen that it's impacted their growth and they're growing more slowly compared to pre-pandemic trends. What's really critical about focusing on growth in this moment is that it's gonna take above average growth to get kids back to where we want them to be. There will be no closing the gaps that are due to the impacts of the pandemic if we're not getting kids to grow above average rates. One of the reasons we decided to work in Schiller Park is that their schools look like schools throughout the country. About two-thirds of students are on free and reduced price lunch. 55% of students are non-white. Schiller Park spends about $2,000 less than the state average per pupil. Our high growth for all schools are schools that in three out of four years produced above average growth for all of their students. Those who start at the lowest achievement levels and those who start at the highest. What is it that makes those schools special? What makes them unique? What are they doing that are helping learners get to that next level? And on a classroom level, think about how teachers are teaching differently that are helping students achieve these extraordinary levels of growth. We identify 10 specific strategies that Schiller Park educators used to try to strike that balance between giving all students access to the grade level content that they need to be successful and differentiating or modifying instruction so that every student gets what they need. Caitlin, our third grade teacher, you know, extremely thoughtful and, and, and thorough in the way that she thinks about her teaching. She is constantly reflecting on what is working and what's not working in the classroom and applying those lessons almost immediately into the next week. You can see it in how she talks about her teaching, you can see it in kind of those week-to-week -week improvements and what she's changing in the classroom. Illustration, wonderful. How do we know this is an illustration? Because it's, it's not drawn. real. It's drawn, it's not real. Okay, you might have sketched it. Title page, beautiful. Text box, wonderful. Labels, excellent. Let's look at these two. When, when I say that phrase, I go to school, what are some of the things that come to mind? I think of students being able to achieve their goals at also their learning levels. And that's one thing I think with our school, having that opportunity to be a part of the schools with high growth, we really take the time to meet the kids at the levels that they are right now and looking at where they're at, where they need to go. And that I think really helps them with their high growth because we're able to then have them master the skills. The teachers in Schiller Park, almost to a one, have a, have a kind of mantra that I heard over and over again. And it's this idea that all kids are our kids. And I think what that underscores is how much uh, so many of these strategies depend on open classroom doors and open conversations. Teachers within a grade level are relying on each other to co-teach their students, to share information about what's working and what's not with a particular content area, to analyze data, to help check assumptions about what that data means for what students are ready to learn next. 
Allison, our sixth grade math teacher, just tremendous work ethic. She's running this self-directed classroom where she's essentially designing learning tasks to support uh, what students do each and every day in the building. All of those have to be uh, hand designed. They also all have to be hand assessed so that she knows what students are getting and what they're not getting. And um, she's really showing up every day to make that happen. I have students that have already completely finished sixth grade curriculum and they are in the process of seventh grade, which is great because those are the kids that need to get to those skills in order to perform on the MAP test and to get to their target score. They need to get to those higher level skills. So it doesn't hold them back which I think, unfortunately, a lot of times in a traditional classroom, those higher kids get held back and they're not challenged enough. So with the self-paced, those higher kids have that challenge. What is this asking them to do? They're putting that tile on a kitchen counter, okay? So you first have to find the area of the figure, okay? Can I split it up? Yeah, so you're gonna split it. You could do it like that, good. So then what would you do to find the area? The challenging and exciting thing about where we are is I think just about every school has an opportunity to benefit from what we've seen at Schiller Park. So over the last three years, we've spent a lot of time admiring the problem and being very attuned to what's going poorly and what isn't working. Now more than ever, we need to be focused on moving forward. How can we get all kids recovered? That's why it's so important to focus on not just what isn't working, but what is working and find bright spots like Schiller Park that help us both understand how we can improve not just the average kid, not just the high achieving kid, but all kids and meeting every kid where they're at and providing them with the instruction that they need to help them achieve to their potential. So the strategies can work at all different kinds of schools. They're not dependent on the resources that you have access to. They're really a function of what teachers do in the moment with students to make sure that they're all able to grow at their highest potential. Wonderful. I feel like I have taken chances this year on different activities. That has been so successful with them. I'm able to challenge them. I wouldn't have thought about that before, but it was a way for me to realize what can I do as a teacher to be at the highest growth level for all my kids.